Hello, uh, welcome back to another drawing video. Uh, for this video, uh, I've slowed down the playback a little bit. Um, it's close to real time. Um, and what I'm going to be doing is just starting my process and kind of just walking you through what I'm doing. Um, this is actually going to be part one of, I think, a two or three part little series of me finishing this piece. Um, we start off in Procreate, um, which is an iPad program, um, and I just, I found this pulp novel image of this woman that I just thought was really cool. I just loved her little lean back pose, and so I just started with that. Um, so the first thing I do is just kind of sketching in the basic form. Um, the nice thing about drawing digitally is you can kind of sketch a rough shape, and then if it's not quite right, you can readjust just like I'm doing now. Um, um, yeah, uh, it's truly the number one benefit that digital has over regular drawing is the ability to resize things, rotate things really easily. Um, so first things first, just blocking in the body. Um, this is when I try really to work with the shapes and the negative space between the shapes. Um, focusing on the size and shape of the negative spaces really helps um, get the figure down quickly because you can see pretty quickly when you've made a mistake. Um, and also, obviously too, at this stage, it's just about keeping it rough, about getting the shape in, not worrying too much about it looking like the final product. So yeah, you can see her adorable little face that's basically just made up of crossing lines so I can make sure that I sort of get the, the direction of the gaze right. Um, yeah, so I got it to a point where I was pretty satisfied that it looked like a human figure and now I can go in and get a little more serious about the actual image. A really good tip that I have in terms of drawing symmetrical things like faces um, is don't just start on one side. Uh, start on both sides. So like I've just done, draw the top of both eyes before you finish one complete eye. Um, if you go back and forth sort of mimicking your line shapes on each side, it actually really helps um, lay the shapes in in a way where you're not going to get one side of the face that looks gorgeous and one that looks totally messed up, <laughs> which is totally a problem that I have struggled with in the past. I found that this sort of bouncing back and forth where you're you know, doing the left and right sides together um, really helps in terms of making the shapes look like they belong together. Um, usually when I'm drawing something like this, I do start with the head and face, uh, just because that is usually a good focus point. You want to make sure the face is interesting and proportionate and looks cool. Um, and then I can go in like now and sort of block in the bigger body shapes. Um, Again, I'm just following my sketching lines, um, not worrying too much about it being perfect because I am just sketching still at this point. And with a digital sketch, it's so easy to make adjustments. Um, so I'm just using my like my own knowledge of human anatomy and also continuously looking back at the reference picture. I'm just trying to get the shape put in. Um, at first I thought maybe I would get rid of her robe and make her wear something different or make her maybe naked. I wasn't really sure. I end up going back and adding some clothes in. Um, also, uh, you can see I just drew this thumb and it looks horrendous. It has like too many joints. It's really long compared to her other fingers. Uh, that's because it's, you know, hard to draw hands. <laughs> um, so I end up going back and fixing it once I realize how horrendously huge it looks. But that's all part of the process with sketching and with working from references and with just drawing in general is you're always going to make mistakes and it's a long process. So sometimes it's just good to start drawing and let yourself make mistakes so that you can go back and correct them later. Um, see, I even, I thought that just fixing the knuckle there was enough. I think I end up going in and redrawing this whole hand at some point. <sighs> Now we're moving on to her little pistol. Um, I find that with complex shapes like little guns or you know any object that has a lot of bits going on, the best thing to do so you don't get overwhelmed is just take it shape by shape. 
So I started with the handle and then the trigger and then I draw in the barrel and I just slowly build up the shapes until it looks somewhat believable. Um, and since this is still just a sketching layer, eventually I will go in and clean it up even more. Um, I think actually eventually I go in and change the gun up a little bit. But my point is just don't get overwhelmed with weird objects that you don't draw as much. Um, just take them shape by shape, you know, a rectangle here, a circle there, and eventually the shape will be put together. And then you can mess around and adjust things uh, like I'm doing now. I realized her body was weirdly skinny and the angles were a bit off, so I'm just messing around with it a little and moving things around. This piece ends up being super full and colorful, but when I started, I kind of didn't have a plan. <laughs> um, I just had this image that I thought was interesting and I wanted to draw it. Um, so that's another thing too that you shouldn't worry about when you're drawing. Don't worry too much about not knowing what you're doing. Um, just try things and experiment a little and sometimes it yields some really interesting results. Um, I'm really happy with the way that this piece turns out in the end. Uh, it's something super different from my usual style and my usual thing um, because I just let myself try something new and mess around and just, you know, followed the inspiration wherever it was leading me. Uh, to get back to what I'm actually working on, um, you can see that I decided she did need a robe. It just, there's something about the robe vibe that really fit with this woman's pose. I don't know, it just made her look so much more awesome that she's in like a chill robe and about to shoot some guy. I don't know, I just liked it, I went with it. Um, I also went in, I added some more face details details um, but I end up doing a little bit of changes to her face in a while um, and at this point I just am trying to fill the space around her um, I do a lot of those little sort of rectangular background shapes in my drawings it's just something I've developed in my style that helps me define backgrounds and define borders of pieces um, oh yeah so Here's where I go in to add something to her face. I just, I don't know, there's something about the eyes that were bugging me. And I just thought, wouldn't it be great if she was in sunglasses? <laughs> and that's really all there is to it. Um, so obviously when I go in to do the final drawing, I clean those up a bit. But uh, there you have it, sunglasses. Sometimes that's all you need. Especially if the eyes are giving you trouble. Maybe your character just needs some sunglasses to cover them up. So yeah, uh, at this point I think I end up just adding some background elements for the most part. Um, this drawing actually took me a couple of hours, so it's going to be, I think, a three-part video. Um, and in the next part, I'm going to take this sketch that I finish up here into Adobe Fresco and add some color and really finish the piece. Um, I just thought it might be more interesting to slow these videos down a bit so that I can properly talk through my process without the video just speeding along ahead of me. Um, so I'm hoping that uh, you enjoy it. Um, at this point I was just searching for inspiration. What can I add to the background of this piece? Um, and I find some interesting little vibes and then I just start adding things. Um, because it's a sketch, I'm not worrying too much about if I'll keep these elements or if they'll change at all. Um, I'm just trying to get myself thinking of where this piece is going. Um, and weirdly, light bulbs are something that I really love to draw. Um, just the symbolism and the shape I'm just really into. So I decided to add some light bulbs and some other stuff in the background. One of the things about being a person that draws all the time um, that is hard to teach other people is so much of creating art is just practice. Just doing the same thing over and over again until you get better at it. Um, like even just drawing simple objects like a light bulb, you know, the more you do it, the easier it becomes to do without a reference or without anything helping you. Um, and so it's really my number one piece of advice for anyone who wants to get into drawing, no matter what your skill level or 
you know, if you plan to be professional or just have it as a hobby is just do it a lot. Try to find some time every single day to draw and draw the same stuff over and over if you want. If you really like, you know, people's faces, just draw faces over and over and over and over. And eventually you'll find that it's really easy and you don't need a reference anymore. And, you know, it just, it's something that takes practice. And so yeah, just get out there and practice. This video is going to be wrapping up in a minute or two um, as I'm just finishing up the sketch. Um, I will be back in two days with part two of this video where we get into the color and doing some really interesting layering effects. Um, and I'm going to talk through um, some of my <laughs> very minimal knowledge on digital work. Um, digital stuff is something that I'm not quite as adept at. I've really only ever done digital sketching for tattoos. Um, so it's part of the reason I did this piece is to learn some things myself. So yeah, in the next part, I'm going to talk you through some of that and we'll just uh, finish up this piece together. Um, yeah. So thank you so much for joining me for these little 10 minutes of drawing. I hope that you enjoyed this little sketch process. Obviously this drawing is not even close to done, but next time it will get much closer. As always, uh, if you want to see more of my work, there's links in the description and on my channel. Uh, also, I just want to give a shout out to my good friend, Annie Kingsmith, who uh, wrote and recorded the music that I'm using for the background music in this piece. Uh, you can also find links to her work in the description. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you for part two in just a couple of days. Have a good one.